Web Warriors. Web Warriors. Ooh, we. <laughs> oh my goodness, Web Warriors. Where do we even begin with this film, bruh? Oh, Madam Web. Where do we begin? I don't even know, man. This movie, I gotta say, this movie has to be uh, so far my favorite movie of the year because it is just a goddamn comedy, bruh. <laughs> it is a lovable comedy, all right? That the simple fact that they had a um, fucking huge ass studio like Sony Pictures decided to greenlit and do a Madam Web movie and it, it's so bad, it's hilarious. Like, <laughs> so bad, it's hilarious. People, some people on YouTube is talking about this movie is not even like hilarious, it's just bad. I'm like, no, motherfucker, it is bad. I'm talking about we have actors in here that genuinely do not want to be here the main actress who plays madam web in every interview sounds like she doesn't she didn't even want to be bothered hell didn't she even fire her 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 agent after seeing the trailer <laughs> like you can't tell me like she don't want to have anything to do with this movie you literally have um shitty ass fucking uh, lip syncing in terms of fucking Ezekiel, the actor who plays Ezekiel. I'm talking about his voice sounds like literally like it's uh, in desynced, like it's not synced at all of what he's saying, and it's hilarious. You're talking about shitty dialogue. I'm even talking about goddamn. They can't even do um, fan service right. Like, characters are, are trying to name drop Spider-Man and whatnot, and they can't even do it. There's literally a scene, spoiler, there's literally a scene where fucking um, young Uncle Ben is saying, I'm seeing somebody. And Madam Web's like, oh, who is the person? And the, it's just do an awkward silence, and it moves on from the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this movie is hilarious as it goes through, man. Uh, the only cool thing about this movie is the premise. Um, the premise is actually kind of interesting. Almost like a Terminator, but with Spider-Man characters. It's, it's kind of interesting, but the rest of the movie shit. But we're not here to talk about the movie. Uh, I was gonna sit here and talk about the movie but i really honestly have nothing to really contribute so i'm gonna pull uh chris stuckman uh shout out to chris stuckman amazing um youtube critic i've been watching his content for years and recently he did a semi review slash discussion about um madam web and he's got a little pushback on it because he didn't really review it all he did was just um, kind of criticize the studio and why studios make movies like this um, and was just trying to be a little too friendly to the studio um, to the, the directors and whatnot and I get it I can kind of understand he's a, he's going into film stuff but I'm not gonna hold no punches I think the movies got awful. Everybody who worked on it, including the director and the writers and everybody, should be kind of embarrassed. But I really just want to talk about this whole Sony uh, Venomverse slash Spider-Man that doesn't even have Spider-Man in it. And just talk about why it's not working, what needs to be improved, and also the future of this shit. So without further ado, let's begin with the first question. So first of all, let's first the answer the, the elephant in the room. Why does Sony make these Spider-Man spin-off movies? Simple answer is to make money. All right, that's the simple answer. I think that's the bare bone answer. Every company's trying to make money. Any studio's trying to make money. So they see an IP, they're gonna take it. They're gonna turn it into a movie. Simple as that. The bottom line, however, is that. Sony is just doing this to keep the rights to Spider-Man. I've said this numerous times. Sony don't give two shits about Spider-Man. They don't understand what makes this character so beloved. They don't get this character. They don't care for those characters. Because if they truly cared about Spider-Man, 
why the fuck did they say for Spider-Man 3 were forcing Sam Raimi to put in spy, uh, Venom in a film that didn't need fucking Venom in it? If they really cared about fucking uh, Spider-Man, why the fuck did they take creative control away from Mark Webb and Amazing Spider-Man 2 that turned that fucking movie into shit? If they really care, why did they green light a whole fucking Venom universe, this Venom verse, and not do anything right with it, including those two Venom movies, in my humble opinion, even though there's some elements I like about them. And before any of you guys say, well, oh, Into the Spider-Verse is, is, is amazing, is great, Sony got that right. The only reason Into the Spider-Verse is right is because of two, I repeat, two motherfuckers, um, Miller and Lords. Remember those motherfuckers, because those guys are the fucking goats. They have leverage on their side, so they can say, Sony, we're doing whatever the fuck we want. It also helped that Sony's animation studio isn't really up to par with most animation stu studios, like Pixar or Disney or whatever, or DreamWorks. They're not up to snuff. So when the movie came out, all of us was kind of astounded by what they could have really accomplished. And again, and I stress this enough, Miller and Lorge had that shit on their fucking wraps. All right. These guys get it. They understood the assignment. They understood why Spider-Man is beloved. So trust me when I say the only reason Enter the Spider-Verse or the Spider-Verse movies have been great is because of those two. And of course, a bunch of other artists that work on that shit. But that's inside the point. So trust me, these guys don't give two flying fucks about Spider-Man. And so when you have a company that don't give a fuck about Spider-Man, you run into multiple fucking problems that could easily be solved. So the biggest problem I feel that the Sony verse has, the Sony Spider-Man verse has, or I'm going to call it the Venom verse as of right now, uh, is that it's directionless there is no point of watching any of these movies because they're leading to absolutely nothing none of them not the venom movie the venom movie isn't tying into anything that's going on with the fucking morbius movie from what i've seen or heard the fucking morbius movie is not tying into anything that the venom movie is doing there's not leading into anything again people might say well oh we don't want this to be mcu to five okay that's great and all but you know what keeps people on their fucking butts and make people go see the next installment of uh fucking marvel movies is that interconnected tissue there is no reason to watch any of these fucking movies even venom and again i like the venom movies i think they're okay but you know even those i'm like where where are we going with Venom? All right, where are we going with Craven the Hunter? Who asked for Craven the Hunter the movie? Like they need to sit down and actually plot a course of where the fuck we're taking this. We're either gonna do Null the symbiote, um, God, as as the main antagonist of of I would call it Act One or you know Phase One, you know. Or we're doing multiverse, which could have easily been explored in, in Madam Web. Madam Web should have been the movie that introduced multiverse because the audience already kind of understands it because of the MCU and also because of uh, Across the Spider-Verse came out. So people know multiverse. So why aren't we doing it? And you gotta figure out what's the main what what is what is the main thing you want your audience to do to see a bunch of different Spider-Man hang out or a war with the god, the creator of the symbiotes with Venom and, and some of the villains tag teaming up. Like that could be really fucking cool, but you gotta plan a course. And right now, Sony doesn't have any fucking course of action. Fucking and this is a spoiler for fucking uh, Madam Web. So if you haven't watched Madam Web, here's your chance to leave. Madam Web has no after credit scene. So we don't know 
what the fuck does this tie into? The movie makes it seem like it's not even trying to tie into anything. And that is the biggest fucking flaw. And I know what people are going to say, well, oh, back in the day, comic book movies didn't tie into anything. We not focusing on a 2000 movie, bro. This ain't fucking 2001. This ain't 2003. This is fucking 2024. You know, you can have solo standalone films. Hell, I'll give you one right now. Let's do a Spider-Man 2099 movie. You know, it's futuristic. You could go crazy in terms of design of sets and whatnot. You know, you have a Spider-Man who literally, literally is more aggressive and he's more cooler. In some case, has a cooler costume than Spider Peter. <laughs> like, like there's so much you could do with a 2099 Spider-Man. All right in live action and based off of how people gravitated towards miguel in into the spider-verse i mean across the spider-verse let's fucking go for it like all bets are off you are playing with the most iconic superhero of all time let's go for it hell i'm hearing rumors that there's supposed to be a spider-man um noir film make that into a detective sh show or a movie and that's another thing Let's do more movies. Let's do more shows. Like, let's not just do movies, you know? And we're going to talk about more about that later. But, yeah, let's do solo films. Let's do standalone film that doesn't tie into stuff. But let's make sure that the, the, the ultimate goal is making sure that we have a vision of where we want these characters to go to their ultimate end game. We want to hit to our end game. And as of right now, I don't see it in this universe. I don't see an end game. It just seems like a bunch of shit's just been thrown on the wall. And that's not that's not satisfying. That is not that's not gonna work out in the long run. <laughs> Ask DC how that turned out for them. Another issue that this universe has is no Spider-Man. Who's the Spider-Man of this universe? I am literally sick and tired of walking into these Sony movies and not knowing who's the Spider-Man. Where's Spider-Man? Nothing. Again, I always said this to people. You know, Spider-Man's Rose Gallery is the coolest Rose Gallery, but they're not on the level of, of Batman. And what I mean by that is that I think Batman Rose Galleries can hold their own without Spider-Man. I, re I mean, without Batman. I think Batman's Rose Gallery is that cool that they can hold their own without Batman. Batman doesn't have to show up in anything, and they can be fucking cool. Spider-Man, on the other hand, his Rose Gallery is connected to him. They need him to order to shine. You can get away with a Venom solo film because eventually in the comic book, he branched off and be his own thing. He was that cool of a character that he branched off and do his own thing. You know, you can do a superior spider foe, which is basically uh, these low-level villains um, and make that into a heist film you know you know that could be something cool but without spider-man the center piece the universe just doesn't work you know and granted it doesn't have to be peter parker spider-man we have thousands of other spider-man spider-man hell let's be ballsy let's use Miles morales for this universe you know let's age him up let's have him be uh, a spider-man that has been doing his job for six to seven years you know, and now he's facing against these greater enemies that he's never faced before. That would be so cool. The dynamic between him and Venom would be completely different from Peter. And that would be cool. That would be something different that fans have never seen before. But it just doesn't make sense. Like, certain villains do not work without Venom. I mean, without fucking Spider-Man. Like, I hate to break it to you guys, you Venom fans. And I know a lot of Venom fans will is going to probably disagree. But I just don't think Venom works without Spider-Man. None of the two Spider, none of the two Venom movies have worked, in my own opinion, because it doesn't have Spider-Man. Like, why the fuck is it the first movie Venom it goes from this this monster who wants to kind of take over the world to all of a sudden wants to be the lethal protector? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Like, no, that's not what we do here. That's not what we should be doing. You know, we introduce Spider-Man and he be the reason why he becomes, you know, this vengeful, angry person. It's like in the comic books. 
he got his name because of fucking spider-man's interference and peter's rejection of the black suit and he hated spider-man for always interfering with his photography shit and fucking Venna, uh, I mean, the symbiote hates Spider-Man because of the suit. I mean, because he rejected him. And what do you get? Two angry motherfuckers gets Venom. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Like, I just don't get it. I just don't get how you guys just skip that origin story and go straight into the lethal protector stuff. There's a whole chunk of Venom's stuff that is cut out because you don't have that rivalry. You know, and see that growth of Venom. Now he's just protecting Chicago or something because he wants to. The fuck? I don't get it. It just doesn't work. Madam Web, you literally have three spider Woman. Why aren't they tag teaming these villains? Like, I, I don't... I don't get this. Like, I don't... I, I just don't know, but it can't work out this way. Hell, if you want to even go even, even more balls deep... Use Silk. Silk is a new character. You have more creative freedom control to do shit. But as of right now, I don't care to see a Craven Hunter movie if Spider-Man's not introduced in some form or fashion. I don't care to see any of these movies without Spider-Man in them. So that's a that's a whole different story. And the most important thing, they're just not original with anything. Like, cool, we're following the the Spider-Man villains and and whatnot. Why the fuck are these movies not rated R? Why are these movies not going balls deep in terms of like uh, brutality and horror and whatnot? Like we have evil characters or anti-hero characters. Let's balls deep. If you're not gonna introduce Spider-Man, go balls deep. Go crazy. You know. I think that would be cool to see a rated R Venom movie. I think that would be fucking awesome. I'm, I'll say this about Craven the Hunter, at least it's getting a rated R release, and I think that could really benefit that movie a lot, because it'll be edgy, but no one's doing edgy content now, besides the boys and, like, outside of, um, comic book shit, but, you know, I think it would be nice to do a noir Spider-Man movie or show, um, that's just, that's just fucking rated R. And that would be so awesome, man. So awesome. And I saved the best for last. Not everyone needs a fucking movie. All right? Like, if you really want to give certain characters uh, a movie that's not well popular, fucking, you know what you can do? Give them a TV show. Give them a miniseries. You know, not everything needs to be the big blockbuster extravaganza. We are living in the day and age of streaming service. Like, put a fucking Silk show on Disney Plus or something like that. Like, come on, guys. Like, we are living in the digital age. You know, you know, not everything needs to be a movie, man. And I just think there's way more better avenues than to just, you know, spend a crazy amount of money to put a movie in a theater when you can literally get a smaller budget, uh, a showrunner, and some great writers, and make a kick-ass fucking Spider-Man spin-off show. You know, make, make it make sense, bro. Make it make sense. So I'll just wrap up the video by saying this. Madam Web really exposed the really baffling decisions that goes on in sony headquarters when it comes on to the spider-man movie license they have no idea what they're doing we have a universe that doesn't have spider-man we have a universe that is all over the place and no clear vision we have a universe that generally is not unique in any form of fashion other than it's like trying to make homage to 2000 early 2000 comic book movies and it, overall they're just not taking any other original ideas or taking a risk or doing anything bold in this universe and if they're not going to do anything bold with this universe then i would just say stop fucking making these live action movies just let's fucking disney handle all the spider-man films and you guys just focus on the fucking uh animated films and call it a day 
Because if you're just wasting people's time with all this fucking nonsense, this trash ass shit, and I think they could be doing so much better. They could be so, so much better if they was actually focused on making great quality Spider-Man content. Anywho, guys, that's gonna do it for my video. I hope you guys enjoy. If you're new to the channel, please comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know what did you guys think about Madam Web or what were some of the things you want to see in a spider um sony spider-man universe comment below and let me know and as always stay tuned new videos are coming soon it's your boy mrs generate signing out have a good one